Welcome to Penn Medicine, Becker ENT. Today we're going to talk about what happens when you have a hearing test. So what we typically do is uh, bring the patient in. We'll, we'll do an extensive uh, questionnaire about what are they experiencing? What is the problem that's bringing them to us? And uh, where are they noticing the deficits in their life? And we then will want to do the test to determine what the problem is with their hearing. So we start out with the questionnaire. We do a visualization of each ear using an otoscope, or this is my little ear light otoscope. Um, so we look in each ear to make sure there's no wax in the way and make sure that um, nothing will impede our test. Once we do that, we will then use a little computer that gives us a reading of the eardrum and this is called a tympanogram or tympanometer the device is that it creates a tympanogram it does a, a very slight pressure in the ear canal to move the eardrum with a little bit of air and that lets us know that the eardrum is intact without infection without fluid behind it that's very important if you have any medical um, portion of your hearing loss we want to make sure that that's taken care of so this gives important data to our physicians so the tympanogram is done. I can show you just how it would be. This is Mark, our audiology coordinator, and uh, we would look in first, and then we would use the, the uh, little earbud to do the tympanogram uh, for each ear. It literally takes a second per ear, and that is it. Next, we would have the patient walk into the booth. Watch your step. We use a booth because we want to isolate the patient so that there's no outside sounds, no truck driving by, no phone calls, no people talking in the hallway that will interfere with the test. And you can see it's very sturdily made, but it's roomy. You can see that there's light in here, there's a window to see the audiologist, so you're not sitting in a very closed, confined space. It's comfortable. There's air conditioning in here, so it doesn't get stuffy. We would give the patient a response button or they can raise their hand when they hear the beeps. If it's a child, they would look at lights to make sure that we would know that they're responding. We then put little earphones on for them. These are insert earphones and they're easy and lightweight to wear, nothing uncomfortable about this at all. And then we describe to the patient how to do the test. So they would press the button each time they hear beep beep in their ear and if they hear a steady air noise, they are to ignore that. Okay, so this would get compressed and put in each ear canal, and then Mark would be able to hear the beeps for the test. We would also ask him at some point to repeat back words to make sure that we know how his understanding of speech is. Um, sometimes we have to use some background noise for that. There's also a portion where we put another headset on this helps to rule out any middle ear or eardrum component to the hearing loss, so this would also go on the patient's head and they would press the button for the beeps again. This is a different set of earphones. Sometimes we have to use these. So it depends on the patient, it depends on the situation, uh, but those are the standard earphones that we use. For children, we have the sound coming out of the speakers, very young children. They would not be able to wear earphones. They certainly wouldn't be able to push a button. Once children are about three and a half or four on up, they can do the same kind of test. We might have them listen with a block and drop a block in a bucket every time they hear a beep. So they can do a version of an adult hearing test as well. So I just wanted to give you a little idea of the feel of this. It's pretty comfortable in here, right, Mark? Yeah, yep. no, I'd say so. So easy to do, doesn't take long, about 10 minutes and you're done and we have a good answer on how your hearing is. And thank you for joining us for this tour.